So here's my wallet. It's an ugly little thing, but I was going through it the other day with a friend and I realized that I have so much stuff that I can show you guys that I think you are going to enjoy. Now, initially, I just wanted this video to be about my everyday credit card setup and we're definitely still gonna talk about that, but I have so much more to show you guys today. What's up guys, it's Humphrey. Welcome back to my channel. And I know that going through someone's wallet, going through your own wallet is a pretty intimate thing. And I noticed that whenever my friends leave their wallets around, I sometimes ask them with their permission, of course, if I can poke around in there. I really just enjoy seeing what other credit cards people are using, why they chose those credit cards. And if they're only using a debit card, well, you don't wanna know what I do to them. No, God, please, no, no! So today we're gonna go through my entire wallet. We're gonna talk about my credit card setup, why I chose the credit cards I did, as well as what my favorite credit card setup is for beginners. And you'll wanna to stay to the end of this video to see that exact setup. So I have everything laid out right here, but let's start with the cash. I mean, there are 10 to 15 cards here, but the cash is, the cash is king, guys. So let's start with cash. So right now I have, let's see, $171 in cash in my wallet. And I really like having cash. I think cash is king. There's always going to be a use for cash. And I always like to be prepared with cash. Some people even say that a gentleman always carries cash. I like to consider myself a gentleman and a scholar. The next thing that I have in my card or my wallet, my card, is a Costco wholesale card. And uh, I have a camera over here. So I'm just gonna show off my Costco card. And I use this all the time to go buy coffee, to go buy, not coffee as in daily coffee, but I like to buy my ground coffee at Costco. It saves me a lot of money. And the other reason I like the Costco membership is for the gas. So I have the Costco card. My next item here is a Duckies car wash card. And this has about nine car washes on it left. I bought it from a friend who didn't want it anymore and he was a little bit strapped for cash. This is my one friend. And so he allowed me to buy uh, uh, 10 car washes for $100, which I thought was a pretty good deal because these car washes, they retail for like 35 bucks. So pretty happy about that purchase from my friend. As you can see, I like to buy things in bulk and save up. The next thing I have in my wallet is this Phil's coffee card. And it is a $30 gift card to Phil's coffee. I got it for my birthday and I don't really use it that often, but I do like Phil's coffee. It is one of the better drip coffees in my opinion. If I do go out for coffee, Phil's coffee. The next thing I have is a Stanford University library card from my cousin. I know this is a little bit weird, but I use this card to actually get discounts at the driving range for my golf balls. So sometimes I show this card and I can get a discount. Um, slightly unethical. I don't actually do it that often anymore. Usually when I go, I feel kind of bad. So this has just been sitting in my wallet for a long time and it's really only a dollar difference at the driving range. So I haven't really been doing that much, but I used to do it in the past. So <sighs> don't tell Stanford. Oh, geez. So this is just an old library card. Uh, don't, don't need it anymore. Really quickly, we have um, my health insurance card, which is right here. And then we have a Visa gift card, which my same friend who sold me the car wash, car washes on the card actually sold me this as well because he wanted to transfer some cash. And so I gave him some cash for this, uh, this Visa gift card here. So easy enough, easy enough. And then we have my AAA card, which I'm gonna try to cover up the numbers, but my AAA card right here uh, gives me roadside assistance. It is part of my car care. So I really like having that as well. Now let's talk about my credit card setup because I think this is the most interesting part of the video. I have in my possession right now a Chase Freedom, a Chase Sapphire Reserve, and an American Express Gold. So uh, as you can see, I'm gonna try to show these off right here without the numbers. Uh, Chase Freedom, Chase Sapphire Reserve, and American Express Gold. And I'll tell you why I got each of these right now. So first let's talk about the two big ones, the Amex Gold and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Both of them have a very large annual fee. The Amex Gold has a $250 annual fee and the Chase Sapphire Reserve actually has a $550 annual fee. So combine these two and it's actually $800 a year in annual fees that I'm paying. However, what I found was that with my spending on both of these cards, I more than make up for the annual fee as well as all the perks that come with these cards easily make up 
stuff for the annual fee as well. Let's talk about the Amex Gold, for example. The Amex Gold has a $250 annual fee, but you get 4X points at dining and restaurants, as well as 4X points at grocery stores. On top of that, I get a $120 annual credit for using Grubhub, Seamless, or something like eating at Shake Shack. Since I usually go to Grubhub once a month, effectively I can get $120 in credit from Grubhub. So basically the effective annual fee of this guy is gonna be 250 minus 120 or $130 at that point. So a quick refresher is that one point is equal to one cent. So basically to break even on $130 of an annual fee, I need about 13,000 points to break even on that spend. Now, since I need 13,000 points, I can either spend $13,000 if I was getting $1 for one point, but the realistic thing is, is that with this card, you're getting 4X points on dining and groceries, so you only need $3,250 worth of spend in either dining or groceries to make up for the $130 annual fee that this card effectively charges me for. That means, on average, I need to spend about $270 a month on either dining or groceries to make up for the fee of this card, which is 130 points, or $130 excuse me. My food bill on average is about $500 to $600 a month, so easily my spending habits alone will make up for the annual fee of this card. Okay, so what about my Chase Sapphire Reserve now? So the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a $550 annual fee, but $300 of that is actually a travel credit, so if I spend $300 in any of the part of the year that actually goes into the travel category, I get that back as a statement credit. So all of a sudden, this annual fee, instead of being $550, is actually closer to $250 after the annual credit of travel. Now, when it comes to the travel category, spending can actually include quite a lot of different things like airlines, hotels, upgrades, seat assignments, checked bag fees, and even Lyft and Ubers can be actually considered in the travel category. In addition, I also get a $60 DoorDash credit every year by using the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So effectively, my annual fee now is 250 minus $60 or $190 a year. Now it also comes with a myriad of other perks such as the Lyft Pink membership, a DoorDash Dash Pass, that's hard to say, Priority Pass Lounge Access, which I found to be pretty useless, so let's not talk about that and you can get a statement credit for applying for TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. So overall, I probably value those perks at maybe $90 a year, maybe you can even push it to 100, but let's say it's $90 a year, that means my effective annual fee on this guy is gonna be $100. Not only that, I get 3X points on travel and dining with the Chase Sapphire Reserve and 1X points on every other purchase. So both of my cards usually make up for themselves many times over just with the annual spending that I normally do anyway. One thing I forgot to mention with the Chase card specifically is that in the Chase portal, you actually get 50% more redemption value on your points for traveling. Now today I was at the bank for a completely separate reason, but the banker actually informed me that they started to do 50% more redemption on your points for actually just paying off your bills as well. And that kind of blew my mind, like that's the first time I've ever heard of that. So basically, what they're trying to say is that you can use your points to pay off your own basically charges on the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So similarly, that means if you have $150 of charges on your Chase Sapphire Reserve, you can use $100 worth of points or basically 10,000 points to pay it off, which I thought was pretty cool. Another great thing about the Chase Sapphire Reserve, in my opinion, is that I have a Chase business account with a Chase business credit card. And so by having that business credit card, I can accumulate points on the business credit card and then just transfer them to my personal Chase account, which I think is awesome as well. The other great thing about both the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the American Express Gold is that they have crazy welcome offers. It's usually 50,000 or 60,000 points if you spend $4,000 in the first three months. So these are the two main credit cards that I use on the daily. And I also have right here the Chase Freedom card. Now this card has been discontinued, but basically it offered me 5% cash back on rotating categories throughout the year. And I think they actually discontinued this in favor of their other Chase Freedom products like the Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase Freedom Flex, which are pretty amazing cards as well. All right, the last three cards in my wallet are pretty basic. Uh, I have my business debit card right here. I have my normal debit card and basically my identification. So. Uh, nothing to write home about there, but uh, I hope that that was pretty interesting to see what's in my wallet. Now let's talk about my favorite credit card setup for beginners, because I know I just spent a, quite a bit of time talking about my own credit card setup. First, let me give you guys a quick disclaimer on credit cards. If you lack the self-discipline to actually pay off your balance in full, or at least pay off the majority of your balance in full every time, 
don't get a ton of credit cards. Maybe you just stick to one or maybe don't even get a credit card at all. However, if you can treat your credit cards like cash, then they can actually be great assets for you and can actually earn you guys money back and actually save you money in the long run. In my opinion, the best beginner setup to have is number one, to have the City Double Cash Card. The City Double Cash Card gives you straight up 2% cash back on all of your purchases with zero annual fee and that's basically the best part of this card. It's very straight up. It's very easy to understand. You get 2% cash back on everything, 1% when you buy it and 1% when you pay it off. The second card that I would recommend is to have at least one travel card. Now, one of my favorite travel cards and travel rewards cards to actually get is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And right now they have a crazy welcome offer. If you spend $4,000 in the first three months, you actually get 60,000 bonus points. So that's pretty good. If you can always take advantage of these bonus points when you're about to apply for these cards, that's the best thing that you can do. So basically when it comes to these welcome offers, what you wanna do is strategically apply for them before you have like a really big purchase. So let's say you know you're gonna buy some plane tickets in let's say February. What you wanna do is apply for this card in late January so that when you do get it, you can just put that big expense on your card and be well ahead of qualifying for the welcome offer. Now with that being said, don't go ahead and just chase welcome offers for the sake of chasing welcome offers. Let's be reasonable here, but basically if your normal spending will allow you to actually spend that much money to qualify for the welcome offer, then you can go and get it. The last card I would recommend for my beginner setup is actually the Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase Freedom Flex. Those both offer really great cashback opportunities. I believe you get a $200 bonus when you spend $500 in the first three months, which is pretty amazing. Not to mention you also get pretty good cashback percentages back. You get 5% cashback on travel and groceries, 3% on dining, and 1.5% on all other purchases. They both offer really great rewards with no annual fee. Now the City Double Cash card that I did mention earlier has no annual fee as well. So no annual fee for a beginner is always a really good setup to have. The Chase Sapphire Preferred on the other hand has a $95 annual fee, but you can easily make up for that as long as you qualify for the welcome offer. If you're a complete beginner, make sure to watch my video on the top cards for beginners for millennials and Gen Z, which I'll link right up here or maybe in the description below. That video has a lot of great suggestions for anyone starting out with a credit journey or lacking a credit score, so I highly recommend that you check that video out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing everything that's in my wallet. If you have any comments on the crazy stuff that's in my wallet, or if you have crazy stuff in your wallet, I'd love to hear what you guys have. Make sure to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for future videos from me, and also tick the notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I drop a video. If you'd like a free stock, whenever you deposit any amount of money on Robinhood, even if it's just a dollar, use the link in my description below for that. Lastly, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys being here. So I will see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be in a couple days here. All right, peace.